and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and to part three of building Snoop Down Farm, better known as Vera's Cottage. And um, yes, with the comments, I, I do enjoy reading the comments and um, lots of positive feedback, which is brilliant. I enjoy that. And um, one or two comments that I mentioned I may have done something wrong with the barn doors and I think they're right um, barn doors normally open from the outside um, not inside so we'll have to see if I can do something with that with, a, with that without uh, doing any damage but we'll still see um, as for the rest of the build hopefully this week we'll finish off the internals of this room and get the ceiling on which would be great and uh, get the LEDs wired up ready for fitting the roofs and uh, with fitting the roofs there'll be the um, the lintels and the window sills to go in and I might even put the blue window covers on like we've seen in the photograph from episode one now then, as we turn the camera around, some interesting comments regarding this area. Um, I think I will continue it as part of the farm. Um, somebody suggested a sheep dip, but uh, as you can see, that the space is very, very limited um, for a couple of things. I might put a, a barn there um, or some sort of um, cover for the farm vehicles. And maybe a, a, a pig style in a chicken coop if there's enough room but um, space is, is very limited for what I can fit in there so let's crack on so here we are back at the bench and as you can see I've made a slight adjustment to the doors they now open outwards um, it wasn't too hard to do, um, there, there was a little bit of damage to the floor where all the glue had congregated uh, in this corner but I managed to um, scrape the glue off and paint up the floor so that was the only damage uh, as for the other side it, it came away quite easily I think uh, the glue didn't get a hold of the door as much as it did on the other side so yeah so thanks uh, to you guys um, we now have the barn doors opening outwards and if we look closely I have glued the tractor into the barn now which will add a little bit of um, eye candy when we um, <laughs> um, hook up the LED so it just gives us that something to look at uh, matey boy won't be happy because he won't be able to get it back out again because <laughs> this door this side is glued shut but there you go so that's what I've done with the doors and we can now move on so let's see where we go from here the first thing I want to make this week is a pair of doors um, as you remember last week there was a couple of doorways that needed doors so that's what we're doing first we're just gonna make a pair of doors um, so I'm just marking some lines here as you can see we've got two two doors and two two different heights um, I'm not sure how that happened so I'm just marking them out just an idea of now these are going to be panel doors, so I'm just going to try and see about there, 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 and there. It's best to mark with pencil first before using. I'm using a pen, pen so I can um, press down hard and um, create the lines that I'm after. And 
There we have our pair of doors. Uh, they don't look much at the moment, but um, once they're painted, you'll um, see what I mean. Hopefully, all the imprint will come through the paint as well, it normally does. So I'm just taking off any pencil marks. Now that's ready for painting. So I think I'll paint them white, I think. While the paint's drying, I decide, oh, I'll have a go at uh, making a TV. So what I'm doing, you've seen these three pin protectors. Um, what I like about this is the actual shape, the curveness um, of the shape, top and bottom and all round. So I thought to myself, oh, I can make a television out of this. So I've drilled a 4mm hole into the centre of um, the pin there. Uh, I've roughly come down about, I think it's about 7mm, yeah, about 7mm from the top. So I've come down 7mm from the top. What I'm going to do now is just square that hole out using um, my scalpel and a file. And uh, once that's done, I'll be able to cut it to the right height and, um, and then paint it. Um, put in a bit of, bit of um, glazing and that will become the TV. So I'll just cut that off there. And uh, yeah, let's do that, start filing away. Trying to create a square edge. Might be able to just take out all of this, where the, all the swarf where the drill's gone in, and just use my scalpel and cut it down to the line. Do the same on that edge. It's a bit fiddly, but just by cutting up the square corners, I might create a screen. Yeah, it's kind of working. I just need to square the corners up a little bit better. I've squared up the screen, as you can see, and I've also, just below the screen, you probably can't see it, but I have scribed some crisscrosses, um, which will represent the speaker for the sound from the TV. So that's what I've done there, just by, I don't know if you can see it, it's hard to make out, but I have scribed it in all directions crisscrossing it and up and down so when that's painted black it'll look like a speaker yeah you can't you can't make it out so yeah that's ready for um painting okay we have a little bit of a news flash regarding the tv i've added a aerial on, on the top there a tv aerial just by using some naught point five brass wire and a little tiny piece of blue tack folded into a V wrapped a tiny piece of blue tack round the centre of the V and then squashed it between my two fingers to form this shape and uh, that's now super glued on to the top of the TV and if you notice here where the speaker is you can just about make out the crisscrosses uh, that I used with the um, scalpel blade. So that's the TV finished and as you can see we have Captain Scarlet on the screen there. And you can just make out the crisscrosses on the, the speaker. So there you go we have a TV. First for the North Eastern. <laughs> yeah so what I did was there was a shrunk a picture right down as small as I could get it and um, slid that into a piece of plastic and then just placed it it's only placed in there and then I glued a base on and that's it
that's the TV finished. I can now place it into the lounge on the farm. So I was just wondering, because these uh, windows are so, so small, I was just wondering if we could possibly see anything through the windows. But um, as you can see there, you can just make out the TV screen with um, Captain Scarlet on it there. So, yeah, we, we can. Um, but uh, only just. And um, there it is in situ. TV next to the fireplace and as you can see I've uh, glued the the doors on now I've glued that one on and I've glued that one on there but I've left that one open just in case some of that fire glow can come through into this little area but uh, we shall have to see but yeah so we can see some of the detail through these windows only just yes yeah, so I forgot to mention that I had done a drawing before I had um, started making the TV here um, so the other items I want to add into this room before we put the ceiling on is a twin seater and a single seater and a sideboard which will go on the far wall and maybe um, either a coffee table or a dining table with two chairs depending on how much space we've got in that room so that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to make up these two items here and that and then we're going to see what space we've got left to see if we can fit a table and maybe a couple of chairs Right, so I've cut all the pieces for the um, two-seater sofa and the single armchair. Um, we have a base, a middle piece and a top. The top is the actual cushions. So hopefully that will give me um, five millimetres off the floor. One mil, two mil, two mil. And we have the one mil back. So we can glue the three pieces of card together that form the actual seat so we shall quickly do that now I've made the base a millimeter smaller all round so we've got a little bit of a, a ledge at the front so we'll just put on the cushion piece now So that's all nice and flush at the sides. Now then, the back piece and the arms of the sofa um, are going to be curved. So I've got a 3mm drill here and I'm just going to wrap the card, just the top section mine, just to put a curve on the back. Like so. Not all of it, just the back. So when that's glued it just curves away a little bit as you can see there it just curves away a little bit I'll just show you on the side view there so it just curves back and then we'll do the same with the arms we'll just put a curve on those that one and that one these are 8mm square so it doesn't matter which way round we curve it. But what I will do before we glue them on, I will just radius the corners a little bit. So, right, so that's ready to be glued. And here is the armchair. Now, what I'm having to do with this card, because it's such small pieces, the ends are starting to come away so I'm just using a little bit of super glue across the edges of the card and that will just help stop the card from fraying away so there you go so that's the sofa and the armchair done little dinky things aren't they so 
So I've finished the sofa. Uh, I've painted it in a dark green and then I've just covered it over with some satin varnish uh, along with the single seater. Um, the other thing I've done is I've made a sideboard um, using paper and card. Um, You've seen me do similar things like this before. All I've done is I've wrapped three pieces of two mil card together at a certain width and then wrapped some paper around it to form the two cupboards and then just card in the centre for shelves. So that'll stay like that and that just requires painting. So let's have a look at what the room is beginning to look like now. And here's what it looks like now. Uh, I've made a few changes. Um, I now have a portrait of the Queen above the fireplace. As you can see there. And um, I've stuck a huge painting on the wall over there. And I've added a little lad there. He's probably just come home from school. And Captain Scarlet is just about to start. So yes, it's uh, taking shape. Um, so all I've got to do now is add the sofas, the cupboard, and uh, a table and chairs. Then we can put the ceiling on. Right, so this is what I had in mind for the sideboard. Uh, as you can see, we've got a glass vase there with some flowers. Now the, the vase itself is just a 3mm straw cut at about 5mm high. And uh, I put some flowers in it. Well, it is Mother's Day after all. So that is ready to go into the room. Um, I'm not going to bother with the tables and chairs because that would have gone next door into the uh, kitchenette. So this will be the last piece of detail I'll add into the room. And, uh, and then we can um, concentrate on fitting the roof, the LEDs, and uh, the main roof, of course. And this is what it looks like now with all the furniture in place. As you can see, there would have been hardly any room there to fit uh, tables and chairs. I think they would probably would have gone into here, where you would have had the cooker and uh, and everything. So I think this would have been the. Um, the, the kitchenette as it were. So now we can fit the ceiling because the supports are in and uh, yeah so now we can fit the ceiling. With the room done all there's left to do is to add the ceiling and then we can focus on wiring up the LEDs and then putting the roofs in. So I'm using some um, two mil card cut at 2.5 wide so all I'm doing now is just iron this up with the middle because this is the middle support beam you can see I've already um, put a couple of beams in I mean these ones um, were used for the supporting of the roof so I'll just do that and then uh, right so we'll paint these the ceiling white and then paint the beams black and then we can fit this into the building. With the ceiling on now it's time to add the LEDs so I'm just soldering a resistor to the positive anode of the LED. Just hold that there for a few seconds there you go. So yeah so that's what I'm doing now I'm putting all the lights together. Um, yeah, as you can see in here, I've already added some curtains to this little tiny room here, uh, which <laughs> I'm just presuming it's the, the laddie's bedroom. So what I'm doing is I'm putting some flux onto the cable here, onto the wire, so I can tin it ready for soldering onto the positive feed of the anode. So that one can now go through the hole. 
hopefully line up with the resistor, leaving plenty of room for the um, return anode, the negative. So I'm just going to have to hold that in position somehow. So I'm a little bit off centre. But uh, that should do nicely there. If I can just hold that there. That there should be okay. Right, so that's the cables wired in for the barn and the um, fireplace. Um, I've just had a quick look. Um, <laughs> you can't really see a lot, um, which, which is a shame after all that hard work. But um, we shall see um, once we, um, we're finished and the building's in situ. We'll just see if we can get the camera to, to zoom in there and see what we can see but that'll be at the end of the build so at the moment we can now focus on the roofs um, right I've cut my roof um, it measures 126 that way and 72 millimeters that way um, just got to check to make sure that all four corners are square because that's important because that blue line in the middle is going to act as my fold line for the apex of the roof. Um, in order to do the apex you measure down the slope from the tip to the edge of the wall and then add 3mm or so for guttering and things like that. So that's what I've done here. So I'm doing it um, the same way as I've done it before just by scribing with a black pen and then painting it to suit. Uh, so I've scribed one side, so what I've done is I've turned the card around and I'm just going to start scribing from the base of the roof to the top so that the lines end up the same. As you can see there, I'll end up with a narrow line at the top or a narrow margin at the top with equal spaces leading up to the top. So. So that's what I'll do and now I shall start from the bottom roughly about three millimeters and then work my way up. Moving on a little bit, um, as you can see I've cut out uh, the main roof and um, it's it's quite straightforward uh, to be honest. Um, all you have to do to measure for the cutouts is if you've got your apex like this, we can measure from the center of the apex down to where the chimney meets the edge, and then that will give you the dimension for cutting out for your chimneys, because you can just measure down from the center of the roof downwards and um, use that as a guide for cutting out um, for, the, for the chimneys. Now, as we're coming up against another apex going this way now that can be a little bit tricky but if we measure from the edge of the wall here to the edge of this wall and mark it then we can measure the apex that we have here and mark it out on the roof here and then we can cut that out and that will give us a rough guide of how much to cut out um, to meet the apex here. So we, we'll cut out a little bit at a time and we'll see how it matches up with what we have there. So we'll just cut this out. Bear in mind there's a square edge on that corner. And also, as, as you're cutting this out, this is straight up, but don't forget the roof is sloping away. But um, 
that should not be a problem here because this is just a rough cut if we need to cut more then we will cut more but it's best to start with cutting a little piece out at a time to get your dimensions right so as you can see I have cut that out to suit this apex but we have a cable in the way so I'm going to have to notch out a little bit more so we're almost there as you can see it's got to drop down another four to five millimeters here so we'll just mark up that space that we have there at the top of the apex which is roughly about there if we just measure that it's about, we'll call it four millimeters like I said before we'll cut out a little bit at a time and uh, I'm marking it out with a red pen so we can see it against the black and then we'll do the same here but what we'll do on this side is we've got to leave a straight edge um, as you'll see in a minute so we'll do the same for this side but we've got to leave this edge here straight so we'll just cut that straight and then we'll come down to meet that edge As you can see, we're almost there now. It's just that cable now that's stopping the roof from dropping down. So what I'll do is I'll just cut across there and then cut across down there to nothing and then cut that piece out. And then that should be enough to drop the roof down. Right, so here we are. Uh, it took another attempt to get this to sit where I wanted it to sit. Now, if we look level across this angle, right across the top of these three, and the idea is I want when the roof comes this way is to land on the roof rather than a great big gap. So hence why I was taking um, small bites at the at the roof to make sure that. Um, it fitted so that's ready for gluing now so I'm quite happy with the way that's gone so. and just before I do I just wanted to show you that I've added some um, braces to stop the roof doing this um, curving in over and they're just super glued in place Right, so that's the main roof on, and um, as you can see I've added the roof uh, across the entrance of the farmhouse there as well. And it's beginning to look a lot like a farmhouse building now. So we've still got a little bit more to do, and uh, we'll probably save that for next week. So there's just one more thing to show you before we um, call it a day. And this is the other thing I wanted to show you. It's the um, Oxford Diecast Land Rover, which I'm um, using um, as Vera's Land Rover at the moment. I've done a little bit of work on it behind the scenes. I filled in the um, sunroof that was on the top there and the side windows and I've given it a coat of eggshell um, paint which is just a, a tiny bit of yellow mixed in with some gloss white but uh, it's going to need another rub down as you can still make out the um, sunroof so yeah I'm not sure if I will keep that um, on the layout as it looks a bit too modern for the period but um, yeah we shall see anyway I think that is all from me this week and um, 
hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and uh, thanks again for watching and uh, until next time enjoy your hobbies and uh, we'll see you soon bye for now